Hello, and welcome to the FI Entrepreneur, Financial Planning for the Risk Taker. This podcast will show you how to achieve FI through entrepreneurial pursuits by developing a well-calibrated and thought-out plan for risk management so that you can maximize the rewards. Hosted by Certified Financial Planner, Enrolled Agent, and Serial Entrepreneur, Ben Martinek, this is the FI Entrepreneur, Financial Planning for the Risk Taker. The information presented in this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. None of the content is presented as investment advice. Consult your financial professional before acting on any of the information presented in this show. Hello and welcome. This is Ben Martinek here, joined with my lovely bride, Deb Martinek. Hello, hello, everybody. We have a great podcast for you today. We're going to be talking about what we've funly dubbed as The Mistake Show. That's right, The Mistake Show. I think Andrew came up with this, but uh, anyhow, The Mistake Show, sharing a little bit about uh, some of our screw-ups, I think is maybe the better way to describe these, our screw-ups in in life, some of our different business ventures, but also, you know, more immediately in some of our current businesses. You know, we're not going to disclose too much for obvious reasons, but we do want to let you in open the kimono i have a buddy out of san francisco apparently that's an expression they have in san francisco if they're talking about something that's more private open the kimono what what do you think about that is that a fun expression it's an interesting visual <laughs> yeah i'm kind of so that's what he likes to say it's time to open up the kimono a little bit ben I'm like okay huh, sure <laughs> but we're wanting to just talk about where things haven't gone well for us and talk about our reaction our response to that Uh, The challenge that has, uh, really the emotional challenge that failure has in your business. But yet the the reality is, is that it's just going to happen. Like whether you run a business, become an entrepreneur, become a small business owner, it doesn't matter. You're going to deal with failure in all aspects of life. So I trust that many of you are already familiar with this notion of failure. But our twist on this is just going to be what's, what does failure look like, you know, as a small business owner? What do mistakes look like? What do screw ups look like? And, you know, how do you respond? How do you handle them? You know, at the end of the day, you can't be uh, afraid to make mistakes. And I think the underlying aspect of making mistakes here, I kind of like to get your thoughts on this, Deb. When I drove truck, I made some, made some oopsies, right? But I was a company driver working for someone else. And the financial hit for those oopsies ultimately fell on the company. It's like, whoops, sorry about this, but really don't want to do that again. But I wasn't paying the bill at the end of the day. And I, what I will tell you the difference is, is when you're the small business owner and you're the one who makes the mistake, you know, guess who's got the company tab on this one? Uh, you do. And that's not easy. We all have naturally this loss aversion to money. We don't want to see, we don't want to lose money. We just flat out, we don't want to lose money. And it stinks when you've got to actually pay that mistake and it, it comes with dollars and cents. Uh, that's not easy. It's one thing to screw up. It's another thing to have to pay that bill. And, you know, when you're a small business owner, that's probably the biggest difference versus if you're working for someone else is if we're working for someone else and you know, hopefully the mistake wasn't that big of a deal, well, they're the one who pays the bill. Yeah, when you're the small business owner, you're the one who's paying the bill. I don't know. What do you think about that, Deb? Perfection is not the goal here. And being able to recognize that is a huge part of the puzzle. You'll hear us say many, many times throughout this podcast that it's about progress. It's not about perfection. But the stakes feel much, much higher whenever it's your image, your business, your accounts that are being affected by the mistake that's been made. But it's about learning from your experiences and taking that failure as as an opportunity to move forward instead of staying stuck in the backdrop and remaining in that place of, well, I screwed this up, you know, and it's really easy to spin your wheels on that and point blame and point the finger and just stay stuck in that position. But that's not going to get you forward. It's not going to bring you progress. And so being able to recognize that, yep, I made that mistake. I've got to own it. We're going to be able to move forward from this. Right. So let's just talk about, maybe we'll talk about other companies' mistakes, mistakes we've made for other people. (laughs) And they think they had to pay the bill, not us. (laughs) Oh my gosh, when we were driving truck, there were so many dumb little things. It's almost amazing that trucking companies are profitable. And uh, <laughs> so they must make money, <laughs> but they definitely have some overhead costs. You know, we have a, a couple of stories. One comes to mind for me in which I was backing up underneath a trailer in which uh, I knew it was under some loose gravel and I knew we were having trouble. I didn't know if I was going to be able to pull the trailer out as <laughs> the short of it. And just being a young male, I mean, like, I'm going to do this. <laughs> this 
pea gravel is not going <laughs> to stop me. <laughs> I can, I got a big truck, <laughs> you know, I can get through anything, right? Well, the short of it is, is I ended up getting the damn truck stuck. <laughs> and I mean stuck, like it wasn't moving. The company had to go get a tow truck and yank me out. And if you're not aware, you kind of like common fees for just to get a tow truck in that line of business is like three grand. <laughs> it's like, God, that was so freaking stupid. <laughs> like, what the hell was I thinking? You know, like I should have gotten another trailer or just come up with something else or asked for help. I don't know. So that was a dumb mistake. And, you know, I really kicked myself for really being so prideful. But I think that pea gravel wasn't going to stop me when, well, it did. <laughs> but you have, a, you have a fun truck driving story too, Deb, don't you? <laughs> this one's fun. When we meet new people and we share with them that we used to be truck drivers, they're always like, wow, that's really interesting. And then Ben immediately opens up with, oh, you should see the time when Deb ripped the roof off the trailer. So it's a really great uh, first interaction that we have with people that's really fun. It just breaks the ice because, you know, this glaring... I mean, we look back at it now and it's quite funny, but at the time it was like, it was an oh shit moment. So I picked up a trailer and I did the inspection it was empty and we had to deadhead 200 miles. This is down in Florida. And I jumped a curb underneath an overpass and didn't realize it at the time, but I felt my trailer tires drag a little bit. Didn't realize it, that I had caused a hole in the trailer. And then I proceeded to drive 200 miles across Florida. Next morning, Ben's getting ready with the trailer to, uh, to get it loaded yeah, this is funny. Deb says it's a hole. That, that sounds so innocent. Deb, can you <laughs> give a better description? Well, what do you mean by a hole it in was, a trailer? Well, look, it was like a can overhead been applied to the roof. Like you could not see it. The evidence from the exterior of the trailer was nothing. But when you went inside the trailer and you saw it, it was like a can opener torn open, like a 12 foot long gaping hole that then wind had gotten into. So it was just awful. So Ben had approached me, came up into the cab. He's just like, Deb, did you do your pre-trip inspection? I'm like, well, of course I did. He's like, well, did you not notice the hole in the trailer? I'm like, what hole? Like I'm not, I, I might be lazy sometimes with my pre-trip inspection, but I didn't overlook a hole. And then it was the 53 foot walk of shame, as I like <laughs> to call it. I got out of the truck and I started walking along the back of the trailer and like, I realized, I remembered that tug that I had on my trailer tires and I thought, oh no, oh no. And by the time I hit the back of the trailer and the doors were opened, I wanted to throw up because this just massive hole is in the trailer, the trailer ceiling. And so I start crying immediately because I'm a woman. <laughs> I was really upset with myself about this, but we had to take the next steps. You know, like I made a big mistake and we had to let the right people know. So I had to call our dispatcher. I had to call safety. And our company was based out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, and they have all got this sweet Southern drawl. And so I called up the safety officer and she, and I said, I'm crying. And I said, I'm, I'm just, I'm so sorry this happened. Am I going to lose my job over this? Because we had been with the company maybe eight months or so at this time. And uh, she said, oh, honey, that's just a little oopsie. You ain't going to lose your job for this. And I thought, oh, okay, all right. So that just relieved a huge amount of pressure off of my shoulders. Like, okay, we still have employment. We can still rest secure in that. But the company's still going to have to pay this, this bill. Thankfully, that wasn't on our shoulders. But we, I made a giant mistake. And I had to come to terms with it. I couldn't blame anybody. It was my mistake. And we had to come to terms. Sure, but I mean, I think the takeaway and why we're sharing that story, partially because it's just fun and humorous and it <laughs> recalls good memories for us. It's uh, over a decade now, if you can believe it, that all went down. A little oopsie is how we would like to describe our mess ups anymore. So, oh, just a little oopsie, Ben. <laughs> so, Because, uh, you know, we mess up and it's, it's easy to really get the weight of that and have it bury you and take you deep. And yeah, you just don't want to ever see the sunlight of day. But uh you know, you got to you gotta try to minimize some of these mistakes, recognize it's not a critical failure. Uh, it's not a life ending, thankfully, or maybe even business or career ending. Let's hope not. Mm -hmm. And it's just a little oopsie. So it's part of life and we're going to move on. And so that's our, our little expression now when we come into our little, we try our best Southern twang. It's a little oopsie. <laughs> yeah, they're doing a better job. The other thing too is I've learned, you know, in, in working and talking with other entrepreneurs, and I'm not quite sure where I picked this up, but... Someone once stated, and I just felt this to be true and want to share it with you is if you're going to be in business, you got to come to terms with the fact that uh, at least once a year, you're going to make a mistake that costs you 10 grand every year. 
you know, and it's just, it's just happens, you know, you got to kind of content yourself with that. I found that to be true. Someone else shared it with me. That's what they had experienced. And in my time of business, it's, I wouldn't say that's exactly true every single year, but it's what I'm like, wow, yeah, boy, that stinks. Uh, I wish I hadn't done that one. It's part of it. You know, one of our more recent mistakes that uh, we've been processing through is we're in the growth phase of our business. And so we're hiring people and trying to bring on new team members. And uh, we've had some really good success with that. We have incredible team members. Just some are absolutely amazing. Love them to the pieces. Uh, you know, and then other team members have been so-so, if I were to be, to be honest. <laughs> this might be a little little harsh in saying that. I mean, they're not, not rock stars, but they're good people. Yeah, you know, you're, you're shooting for rock stars. When you're, when you're running a small business, you want every one of them to be a rock star. Uh, the reality is, uh, hopefully I'm not bursting anybody's bubble here, is that not everyone that you necessarily bring on is, is a rock star. And then we also have had others where it's like, wow, okay, I'm not quite sure how they got through the interview process. And they, uh, they interviewed well and they had a good resume, but man, did not show up the way we thought they were going to show up and you end up having to let them go. And uh, letting someone go isn't an easy thing, but in the grand scheme of things, that's not that big of a deal. It, the challenge and letting someone go is, you know, you're spending money to have them there. Cost money to get them onboarded, cost money to train them. You know, you're paying them for that time. And if only that, that hiring decision doesn't work out. You know, I read another book here recently, which they quantify internally as a company. And they're a bigger organization. I wouldn't run by the same metric, but they quantify that each hiring mistake they have it costs the company 50 grand just because it takes uh, that much time to hire someone, takes that much time to train somebody, and then it takes that much time to figure out that that's not the right person. You got to let them go and then all the commitment it takes to let them go and then find the next one. And there's a lot of resources invested in that process for just one person. Yeah, so these, we should really have another show at some point talking about just those decisions of when to hire, especially when you're a small business. Like that's, that's a big deal. You know, that's, I'm, again, I don't know if it's 50 grand. I think that's probably too high, at least not in my experience at this point in time, but it's thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. It'll put you back. So yeah, we've had that tier recently. And as we're looking to grow the team, those are some of our, our more challenging recurring decisions associated with, I don't know, it's hard to say that they're mistakes. Uh, I would pr like to describe them as setbacks. At the end of the day, you don't really know who you have until you hire them and bring them on and see how things are going. You know, maybe we need to <coughs> improve our own hiring process so we have a even more higher degree of confidence about who comes forward. Gosh, there's just always so many th things to be thinking about and tweaking and adjusting and you think you got it right and then you go and run it and find out it's, it's not working quite the way you wanted it to or it didn't produce the results you wanted. Just, it's, uh, it's never ending. So, but there's, there's going to be mistakes and, you know, there's going to be, there's going to be money that's cost. And one of the things that I've come to terms with as part of this failures piece, this mistakes show is, you know, if you want your business to grow and succeed, you're going to have to be okay with not just making the mistake. Uh, you're going to have to be okay with losing money on that mistake. And truthfully, when you're when you're a small business, especially if it's just you, you don't have anyone else, and you're thinking of bringing someone else on. You know, we tend to operate under two different standards. You know, you know, there's mistakes that I would make, and I'm okay with, or I think they're acceptable mistakes. And then there's mistakes that other people make <laughs> that you have to pay for. Yeah, and you can be a little harsher on those, right? So, like whipping uh, a roof off the trailer. <laughs> right. So, yeah, it's it's not easy bringing on those new team members. And thankfully, I mean, the new team members we have, I have we haven't yet to see ones where they've made a $10,000 a year mistake. Oh my gosh, ouch, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we might have that conversation there. But we certainly have seen them make minor mistakes and things we've had to go clean up or fix or revisit on. It's all part of it. Like you, you just can't get away from it. It's part of, it's human nature for these mistakes to be happening. And it's what you do with it too. Like I'm going to hearken back to something that my dad would always say to me whenever I would make a mistake growing up. And I hated it at the time because I had to really do some self-reflection. But, you know, something would happen then he would say, well, did you learn anything? Because we have to learn from our mistakes, you know, not not repeating them over and over again, but learning from them so that they don't happen again. You know, adjusting your own inward systems and processes so that you can use that as a launching pad to fail forward instead of remaining in that spinning your wheels dynamic of, well, I screwed this up again, you know, didn't do a very good job this time, but being able to learn from it and move forward. Right, so we've got this great quote that Andrew's given us from Michael Jordan. I wanted to share it because I just love it. Who doesn't know or like Michael Jordan in, in some ways, right? I'm a great athlete. And at least if you're a millennial, 
I grew up in Indiana, not far from Chicago. I mean, you know, I was recently watching Home Alone, <laughs> the first one from the early 90s. And if you recall that movie, Michael Jordan's uh, like a cardboard cutout or something mm -hmm. going around in the movies. Yeah, you know, reminisce. I mean, I, I think of Michael Jordan, I think of my childhood. I mean, the two are interlinked for sure. Anyhow, he's, uh, he's quoted to have said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. Like, wow, man, okay. I mean, it's good to give some perspective on this. It's easy. It's very easy to look at other people who are successful and just be like, oh, gosh. You know, it's like the wind's always on their back. They've always got wind in their sails. Everything they touch is gold. Right, yeah, nothing ever goes wrong. You know, here's one of the greats telling you, like, man, 26 times I was stretched to take the game-winning shot, and I missed it. Now, I suppose, to be fair, I mean, how many times was he trusted to take the game, game winning shot and he made it? <laughs> so, <laughs> he's not perfect. We don't expect him to make every one of them. But still, 26 times he didn't make it. You know, there's a, a weight or a burden, a uh, responsibility that has to be shouldered there, but it doesn't always work out. So moving on then, so how do you deal with failure? And uh, I mean, you can even maybe make failure your friend. You, you at least come to terms or come to accept it. I don't know, Deb, what do, you, what do you think? What are the next steps we have to do for making this become more natural? Well, I think as we've, we've already alluded to, you have to understand that failure is going to happen. It's natural. We have to allow it to happen. We have to expect that it's going to happen. But then we, we learn from it. You know, create for yourself a safe environment in which you can fail, which you can try and see what's going to happen. And failure will be a part of that. But, you know, it's not just for you yourself, but also your team, as we've talked about. Of course, there's the, the money cost that goes along with that. But creating a safe place for that to be able to happen as well so that we can all move forward and learn from the failure as a learning opportunity. There are opportunities for growth. I like to say that a lot. It's kind of my mantra. It drives Ben nuts sometimes. But, you know, okay, this was a problem. We're going to find the solution. It's an opportunity for growth. And we're working on progress, not perfection. Perfection is not the ideal here. We'd like for things to go as swimmingly as possible, but understanding that progress is more important than that perfection. And so there's a great book that we'd encourage you to check out. It's called Failing Forward by John C. Maxwell. He's well known for his published work on leadership. So this is not an uncommon name. You know, you just start typing that into your search engine and you'll see a lot of his books pop up. But Failing Forward is one that that we would recommend. He does a comparison between those that are failing backwards versus those that are failing forward. And this is, again, just about creating that safe space for you to be able to make these mistakes, but learn from it. So if you're failing backward, you're going to see a mistake as blaming others. But if you're failing forward, you're going to take responsibility from that and learn from that mistake. And you know, if you're failing backward, you're going to expect that you'll never fail again. But guess what? We're human. We make mistakes. Like nobody is perfect here. And so if you're going to fail forward after a mistake has happened, you're going to expect that that's part of the prop process. Again, we're looking at progress, not perfection. And this last piece that I think I'd like to mention with just dealing with failure is that you can be limited by your past mistakes and you can kind of pigeonhole yourself into a position where like, nope, this is just what's going to happen I'm always going to do this, you know, like the self-feedback loop of negativity. But if you're going to fail forward in the safe place that you've created for yourself, you're going to take new risks. And that's what being an entrepreneur is all about. Like that is a risky, a risky behavior, you know, being an entrepreneur, but taking that risk, moving forward, progress, not perfection. I think these are all of the the guidelines we'd like to encourage you to have in the back of your mind as you experience these mistakes in your entrepreneurial pursuits. Yeah, for sure. Your takeaway here, honey, is, look, I mean, we're going to fail. And so let's not get too surprised when it happens because it, it will, right? And again, I think everyone knows that who's listening to this, that it's just part of life. So, I mean, what are the, the next immediate steps? Ethically, I mean, it's easy, especially if you've made a mistake and maybe you've made a mistake at the company and, and you know <laughs> you know that owning this mistake could could be damaging to you. You know, I think we all have maybe a natural response to be like, well, do I have to really, do I have to actually share the mistake? Do I have to tell somebody about this? Does can someone I, need to know about yeah, this? <laughs> that's right. Can I hide this? <laughs> can, 
can I go throw somewhere? And I think mistakes as to what, what gets owned and shared when we don't need to be uh, soap operas, we're all divulging on a daily basis, maybe what didn't go exactly right today. I mean, some stuff obviously can just be kept internally and other stuff, you know, especially if it's serious enough, no question has to be disclosed. We can't, we can't pretend it didn't happen. We can't ignore it and we can't try to hide or cover it up. I mean, that's, you know, that, that would get you fired. I, I would fire somebody if they did made a serious mistake and then they tried to cover it up just becomes an issue of trust for sure. So mistakes need to get owned and they need to be learned from. And then we need to use them as opportunities to make adjustments. You know, we just had a mistake here recently in the grand scheme of things, it was fairly minor, but it was on a tax filing with a client. And uh, I won't, don't wanna go into the details, but the short of it is, is we put the wrong number in the wrong place. And uh, there's good reason why the wrong number went in the wrong place. It wasn't we did it, I, I did it. <laughs> I messed it up and then someone else reviewed it and found it. It actually ended up working out in the client's favor. They ended up getting us like about $100 more back on a refund. Man, but it's like, you just don't want to go and tell the client, oops, I don't I don't know what it was. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed this. I made a little oopsie. Yeah, I, I messed this up. You know, thankfully the client was, you know, we, we told them, just, look, we, uh, we've we made ourselves aware, you know, as to how this mistake could happen. We're adjusting our checklist and our processes to make sure these mistakes don't happen again. And we just appreciate your understanding. The client was great. It's like, well, no harm, no foul. I'm actually getting a refund back. So I understand. Glad to hear your systems have been updated. And so just, I think, acknowledging this mistake, owning it, and then letting them know, like, we have put things in place to not let this happen again. You know, we are seeking to minimize or have no mistakes. You know, we want things to go perfectly, even though we realize maybe they won't. People appreciate that. It goes a long ways. So, you know, we have to address the mistake and figure out what are, can we do, you know, use it as a learning opportunity. What can we do to not make the mistake again? What, what needs to change? You know, we've been watching... A bit of a, a tangent here, Deb. Something that's really informed our processes. I don't know if anyone wants to go and pick up this TV show and speak something of our personality, but <laughs> we have went on a stint here in the last few months in which we watched like a documentary series about airplane crashes. That's that's you heard me right. Airplane crashes. So, airplane disasters on Paramount Plus. That's right. Smithsonian Institute, I think, is who produces them. So, and you know, the docu-series actually is fascinating and it's all about identifying and learning from, unfortunately, these terrible tragedies. I mean, talk about the weight of a huge, a little oopsie. Oh my gosh, you know, plane crashes and people die. It doesn't get much worse than that. Talk about a bad day at the job. Uh, but, you know, the NSTB board goes through and investigates these crashes and ultimately really tries to figure out what exactly went wrong in this crash so that we can change our processes, our systems, and make airplane travel safer. So boy, I, yeah, if you want to kind of at least something to kind of give some weight or comparison or contrast to your own mistakes, uh, go watch 60 episodes of Airplane Crashes. <laughs> <laughs> it is ironically therapeutic. Uh, so anyhow, that was just a, just a thought throwing, a, that's off script folks, but there you go, throw that out here. What are the thoughts do you have here, honey, on, on failure? Well, I think we've kind of alluded to this too. It's about a lot of it takes into consideration your mindset. You know, it's easy to get into that negative feedback loop. But if we want to make progress and progress is more than perfection, we need to create and maintain a growth mindset. Seeing these setbacks as opportunities for growth, kind of crowdsourcing with your team if you're not just a solo entrepreneur. Like we we do that quite a bit with our team members. Hey, this is what happened what advice, what feedback can you give me? And then being able to crowdsource so that it's more of a team effort as well, instead of just, you know, the failure or the setbacks of one person so that we can all invest in making this process or this system better or this interaction that we have with a client or a prospect. So opportunities for growth, you know, we're not know-it-alls. We're in the process of learning too. You know, we've had so many shifts in how we've done our business and how we've conducted the way we interact with our clients over the years. We've we just celebrated seven years of being in business with the financial planning business and things look a lot different now than they did seven years ago. Thankfully, you know, we've made a lot of progress, but that wasn't without learning. Oh, can't, can't do it that way. So you know, it's an opportunity for growth. We're going to focus on the solutions, not on the problems. Because if you focus on the problems that you're just immediately allowing yourself to set into, step into a negative feedback loop. And you're, that's really difficult to get out of. So focusing on the solution, thinking outside of the box and creating your mindset that 
what we're experiencing now is an opportunity for growth. Yeah, for sure. I'm trying to think of a response, Deb. I'm I said it all. <laughs> you did say it all for today. <laughs> the funny thing is, bringing this back to more of an entrepreneurship thing, is to have a very successful business, things have to go well. Like I, I think that's something that I've just I've learned. And bottom line here is not only do mistakes cost money, but they they impact your revenue and they impact your profitability. And, you know, something I've just come to appreciate for a business that's really well run, in order for a business to be profitable, like the two almost certainly have to go hand in hand. At least that's my mindset on it, in which it has to be well run. I mean, you could have, you know, a business that stays ahead. It just brings in more revenue than all of its mistakes, and it just kind of continues to be profitable despite itself. Long-term wise, those aren't going to be really sustaining. Eventually that something's going to catch up and the business is going to go under. So, you know, you could, you could have a business that, generates more revenue than its mistakes. But, you know, really for a business to to be sustained, the profitability of it, you know, we have to have some tight guidance on minimizing the mistakes, learning from them and getting better. Because it's really just, it affects your ability to be profitable. I don't know if that was as said as well (laughs) as I normally like to say things, but I still think uh, hopefully I've communicated my point across there. We've talked about this pretty well. Do you have any final thoughts, Deb, on the matter? Well, I'd like to think back to one of the quotes that John C. Maxwell has in his book, and I'd certainly recommend for our listeners to pick up that book, Failing Forward. And there's another book called Fail Fast, Fail Often by Ryan Babineau that just provides some great feedback for you when you're going through these experiences. But it's important when experiencing failure to persevere. Learn from the mistake and persevere. You know, I'm just gonna, I'll keep coming back to that. It's an opportunity for growth. And having that mindset can shift a lot of negativity that you might experience in your day in the right direction and use it as a force for good instead of spinning your wheels. Fail forward, don't fail backward. Use it as an opportunity for growth and persevere. Yeah, and I, I think that persevere part is really the, that's the key component to it. Because going back to the point I was attempting to make just a moment ago, one of the things that'll get you down on running a business and the mistakes you make is that you lose money as echoed throughout the, this episode so far. And that that stinks, you know, <laughs> it really stinks and it hurts. But the good news, the bright silver lining in all of this is as you get better and you you improve, you know, you go from losing money to making more money and becoming more efficient and improving your profit margins. And so I think you have to have patience. This is what I was really wanting to get to previously is, you know, have patience with yourself, have patience with yourself individually, have patience with the business too. And especially realize in the early stages, as you probably are going to make the most mistakes, I mean, you're gonna make mistakes throughout, right? But when you're first getting something off the ground and, and thinking through it, it's, it's, you know, that we have your beta versions, right? In software, where this is where we're getting all the bugs out, you know, and you're kind of getting all the bugs out in your business in the early stages. And it's just going to be a lot of uh, missteps, you know, that's going to have its impact on the bottom line and keep you from being profitable or as profitable as you want to be. And I think you just have to encourage yourself to be patient with not only your own mistakes, but be patient with the business's mistakes and be patient, you know, with the revenue or what comes home, you know, plan on mistakes happening, recognize that they will happen and that they are gonna affect how well things go and keep those expectations for the business in those early years in alignment there. Eventually you will overcome these mistakes you will get better and your profits will improve. You know, as you look ahead and as the businesses grow and develop and get better, you know, these really profitable businesses, you know, the reason why they've gotten to be so profitable is they've, they've been screwing things up for a long time and they've kind of really figured out how, how to make things work. And you will too. And so give yourself the time to do that. That's what I would want to encourage you. So expect to fail, give yourself time to fail, and then, you know, give yourself the revenue, the runway, to continue to improve in light of that and then trust that the reward at the end of all of this only is a more and more profitable business and which, you know, going back to the theme of at the FI entrepreneur, hopefully we can convert this more and more into passive income and now you can live off of your business and those mistakes and they can be paying you in dividends. Isn't that just a great idea? The idea that your mistakes are only paying you back in dividends and profit. It is a great idea. Keep at it, folks, and uh, we wish you the best of success, and we'll be right there with you the whole time.
Thanks for listening. I hope you've had as much fun as we did. If you'd like to learn more about any of the subjects we spoke about, please visit our website for show notes, links, and more. Hit like, subscribe, or whatever button you've got in front of you to show some love. Remember, the information presented in this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Remember what Teddy Roosevelt said about the person who strives greatly. If he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Until next time, keep striving. Thanks again, and be well. Mm -hmm.